Hey everybody, what's going on? Everyone here bringing you guys another Battlefield 4 gameplay commentary. I've not done these in a long time and I decided, hey, it's Tuesday, so how about I make a sort of on-topic Tuesday, but at the same time I make a Battlefield 4 commentary and I answer a couple of questions that you guys have been asking in the past couple of weeks. If you haven't seen one of my on-topic Tuesday videos before, this is one of those more serious videos and I don't want you guys to get involved in the comment section down below, not just spamming stuff, but actually commenting on stuff that we're going to talk in this video. The first thing that I want to talk to you guys about is Say When. A lot of you guys messaged me, hey, are you guys still going to do Say When? What's the next one? Are you still going to play with Mooney? And I saw something the other day that kind of bothered me. Somebody was asking, can somebody explain to that person why Nick Bunyan and Big Mooney hate each other? I want to clarify something right off the bat. Big Mooney and I are still friends and we do not hate each other. The reason we stopped doing Say When videos is because the Battlefield 4 menu system does not really allow us to do Say When-ish type of weapon selection. If you guys remember, Remember in Battlefield 3, we would hold down one of the arrow keys and when the other person said when, we would lift it off and whatever we ended up with, that's what we would go with. And that's how we ended up with those random setups, but in Battlefield 4, the menu is different. It's in rows and you cannot cycle through it, so there's no way for us to get that randomness in game. And trust me, we've tried some alternatives. We even had people make programs for us. One was all random weapons and another program you could actually use the arrows and go through all the weapons or the attachments, but we ran into some other issues. The problem was that the program would give us all the attachments not the attachments we unlocked but all of them which means that sometimes we ended up with the last scope of a weapon which we didn't have and we probably had to play three four five six hours to unlock it so as you see it was a little complicated getting that say when setup and the whole point of say when is to end up with completely random setups but it was more like pawn stars i pick you choose we just had to look at a screen and figure out what we have and go with that and that wasn't really as fun i could go on and on but i hope this answers the question of why we stopped posting it. And I've explained this before and I know a lot of people are like, hey, you should have gone back to Battlefield 3 and do it over there. Yeah, but back then, like almost a year ago, when Battlefield 4 came out, that was the whole point. Hey, Battlefield 4 is out, why would we do it on Battlefield 3? And for the people that have been around my channel for a while, you have kind of seen that Battlefield 4 footage has kind of slowed down and there are a couple of reasons for that. Battlefield 3 that was released in 2011, I have played for 400 hours. Battlefield 4 that was released in 2013, I have played for 70 hours. And to throw in one more statistic for comparison, in February I play my first competitive CSGO game and now in CSGO I have 1000 hours. There are a couple of reasons why I don't play Battlefield 4 as much, which include you can still not jump over stuff easily and properly, you always get stuck on them. After a wall has been blown up, you get stuck on the 1 inch tall piece of break that's been left there. Now these are things that were kind of happening in Battlefield 3, were happening in Battlefield 4 beta as well, but it was beta, we complained about them, so it's like, hey, they're gonna fix it, but it's been almost a year, a bunch of DLCs later, and it's still happening. Another thing that grinds my gear is that if you play on any of the open map, which has buildings and stuff like that, people will find ways to get inside those buildings on top of those buildings by placing spawn beacons that kind of glitch you to give you an advantage that you're not supposed to be there. What annoys me is that if there is a building and there's doors that you cannot open or not even blow up with C4 so they're indestructible doors which means that you're not meant to access them you should not be on the second or third floor if it was meant to have people on the second third or fourth floor there should be a staircase or a ladder you shouldn't have to glitch spawn beacon into it aside from those things which I could get over it and play the game there is a bigger problem in my eyes that I see with Battlefield 4 right now which is I'm getting bored what I mean by that that. For example, Battlefield 2 did something amazing that other games didn't do at the time. Huge maps, helicopters, jets, tanks, infantry, just a whole different experience. Then it was followed by Bad Company 2, which was kind of different, but it was ported from console, so there were a couple of issues there, but still, it was a whole different experience. And then Battlefield 3 came out, which was the perfect sequel to Battlefield 2. It had everything you wanted, the jets, the big maps, the choppers, the tanks, the graphics were amazing. It was a game that you wanted to play. Now for Battlefield 2 and Bad Company 2, I was not even playing to record gameplay and I still have over 300 hours on each of those games. And in Battlefield 3, a lot of times I played because I wanted to play. It was just an amazing experience and I wanted to play that game. Now sadly, I don't have the same feeling about Battlefield 4 because in terms of gameplay and the game itself, it kind of feels like Battlefield 3 with some nicer graphics, some more dust and some new maps. And for as much as I want to play this game, most of 
my hours are from trying to record videos with Big Mooney or trying to record some of the new weapons or some of the new maps so I can, you know, post a video or just play so I can have some background for my commentaries. And I know I'm not the only one feeling this way about it. Now, some of you guys know that I also play League of Legends. And before you want to close off this video, because I mentioned League of Legends, don't worry, I'm not going to go in a deep talk about League of Legends. But what I did want to mention is that League of Legends I've been playing for about a year and a half and I have over 2,000 hours on that game. And the reason why is all because of the competitive games. All I play in League of Legends is competitive ranked games. I wanted to mention that because all I play in Counter-Strike is competitive matchmaking games. I haven't stopped completely playing League of Legends, but I did kind of replace it with Counter-Strike. And I know some people are thinking, oh, you want to tell us that you'd rather play that cheap looking Counter-Strike game than to play Battlefield 4 with its graphics and destruction and stuff? And the answer is yes. There is something about the competitive side of Counter-Strike that makes you want to play, makes you want to try harder, makes you want to be better. And that's what's kind of lacking for me in Battlefield. Don't get me wrong, I still like Battlefield, but in Battlefield 3, you wanted to play because it was a new game. It was exciting. It was amazing. You wanted to have that new experience, but that new experience is old in Battlefield 4. I kind of get bored of just TD game conquest or stuff like that because there's no object to it. You don't get placed in a higher rank or lower rank or it makes you want to try harder. And where Battlefield 3 was in a league of its own with the graphics and the gameplay style, Battlefield 4 is not alone because there's Medal of Honor, Crisis, Titanfall, Hardline, which should have been just a DLC, but all of them are just so similar. The last thing that I want to mention is that when Counter-Strike Global Offensive came out, it wasn't really that popular. Not a lot of people played it. It was just sitting at a couple of hundred viewers on Twitch. And when the competitive side was added to it, it started growing and growing. And now it's sitting at around second or third most popular game on Twitch almost every single day. Both League of Legends and Counter-Strike, when they have the major tournaments, they both sit at over 250,000 live viewers. I don't mean to bash too hard on Battlefield, but I'm watching the ESL1 BF4 fall season and it's just sitting at over a thousand live viewers. And I know that it's not Battlefield 4 biggest tournament. I don't even know if Battlefield 4 has a tournament and if it does, how many viewers. I mean, if anybody knows it, please let me know in the comment section down below. But what I do see is that on Counter-Strike, most people want to see competitive games and on League of Legends, most people want to see ranked games. And that's something that Battlefield doesn't have. Well, that's about it for today. I mean, I talked about a lot of stuff, but I do want to get you guys opinion what do you guys think of that like how many hours have you played in past games how many hours have you played in battlefield what is missing for you or do you still play it because you enjoy it or do you not play it or just let me know what your opinion was on what you've heard today have an awesome and blessed day i know that not everybody's gonna watch this video from beginning to end and that's why i want to summarize what i'm about to talk to you guys today in this phrase people used to play daisy for the survivability experience now people play Play it for the hunt. Back in the day, people used to get in a server, find some gear, stay alive, and always try to find better gear. When I say